Alright, so I want to talk about buying video games, because if there's one thing I'm better at than not playing them, it's buying them. Regardless of how casual or hardcore you are into gaming, I'm sure that buying a video game is something we can all relate to. It's practically the first step into gaming. Unless you only play free games, in which case, hey, you do you, I guess. I personally have always loved the experience of buying video games. I don't know exactly what it is. Even now, when I'm older and own way too many video games, I still can't help but feel that wave of excitement over me when I'm getting a new game. Something about going to a game store, finding a new game you've never seen before, or maybe you did know about it, and just looking at the back cover and all the things the game is advertising to you. That was peak childhood for me. Even now still, when I buy a new game, I'll just get back to my car and stare at the back cover of it. Probably because I have brain damage, but let's just call it nostalgia. Oh, and don't get me started on ripping off the plastic covering on a new game and going through the manual, if there is one. But these are all a part of the buying a video game experience. Digital games have sadly taken a lot of this magic away, which honestly is a big reason I still prefer to buy physical. I mean, there are plenty of other reasons I prefer to buy physical, but that's a whole topic for another day. Point being, for all of this though, is that there is a lot that goes into that first step of playing a game, and I'm sure it's different for everyone. I'm sure that there is someone out there who pre-orders every single game and they walk into a game store always knowing exactly what they're going to get. And on the other side of things, I'm sure that there are people out there who have no idea what they want when they go into a game store and just walk around and see what they see. And I'm not trying to sit here and say that one way is better than the other. I think both have their advantages and disadvantages. It's just kind of how you prefer to shop for games. You know, I pity the people in the early days of gaming where getting a new game was rare, maybe for Christmas and or birthday, but that was pretty much it. As much as I would love to have grown up more alongside the evolution of gaming, that is something I cannot say I'm sad I missed. But it was totally understandable. Games used to be pretty expensive for what they were. Nowadays, it's no problem paying upwards of $50 for a new game. Heck, that might even be considered a good deal to some people. But would you really pay $50 for Glover on the N64? Okay, bad example, but you get the point. Now, I rarely ever pay $50 for a game unless it's one that I really, really want, like a new release. But usually, I try and find deals or buy older games that have come down in price over the last few years. And that's been where I've enjoyed buying video games the most lately. It's the hunt, to try and find those really good games that are dirt cheap, either because they're pre-owned or on a sale or for whatever reason. The killer for me recently has been the GameStop 4 for $20 on pre-owned games. I've been able to pick up some really good deals on games that I've wanted for this. A lot of the time it's just a bunch of trash like sports games or super generic titles you see all over the place or just straight up something I already own. But sometimes you hit the jackpot and you will be able to find 4 games that you really want and you can get each for 5 bucks a piece. Not too bad if you ask me. Most of my recent purchases have been through this outlet, and I've been able to pick up some pretty neat titles like Dragon Quest Builder Day 1 Edition so that I can trick people into thinking I'm a hardcore fan that got it at launch, and Pixark to let people know that I have no self-worth. I also got Steep because it looks fun. But yeah, I'll just sit there and rummage through every single title in these 4 for 20 bins and see if there's anything worth getting. It's pretty fun to see what they have, but usually there's not much there, so don't get your hopes up. Like I said, digital games have taken a lot of what comes from buying a video game away from what it used to be. I mean, it's so simple to just go to Steam or honestly any online game store and in a few clicks, boom, you've bought a game. L look, see, I just did it right there. It's definitely a lot more simple and easier to browse a much larger game catalog and find exactly what you want. And if you only buy digital games, that's totally cool. Heck, even I own tons of digital games across multiple platforms. but. I'll always prefer to buy games physically at a brick and mortar game store personally. So that brings up the question of how do I shop for video games? I know I've kind of already talked about the 4 for $20, but that's not entirely how I buy all my video games. I know, shocker, right? Well, to answer this question, it kind of depends. When I know exactly what video game I want, obviously I'll just walk in and go find it, but that's a somewhat rare occasion for me. So. Why go to a game store anyway? I don't know, just to look around, loiter. I just go in and see what I see. If there's ever a clearance rack, I'll definitely check that out. But other than that, there really isn't too much of a method. I mean, I really only look at the games for consoles I actually own, with the exception of some retro stuff maybe. So basically, I just don't look at Xbox. At the moment, my go-to section is for the Nintendo Switch. Usually for bigger releases, I will opt to get them for the PC. 
So a lot more of the secondary titles, I will get those for the Switch since it's a more casual system to play on, especially with handheld mode. I do look at the PlayStation section from time to time, but usually any game I want for PlayStation will be available and run just fine on the Switch anyway, so... Although I still do buy plenty of PlayStation games since the Nintendo Switch is not offered in that 4 for $20 at GameStop, at least from what I have seen. So that is pretty much my method to any game store, I just look around and see what I can see and if anything catches my eye, I might grab it. If you've seen me talk about my gaming backlog, you know that any game I buy, I intend to play. So you can see where my backlog problem originates from. I know I've kind of said this already, but even now in my 20s, every time I get a new video game, I still can't help but get all giddy looking at the back cover and seeing what the game has to offer, and reading through all the manuals and info sheets that the game has inside the case. Also, this is probably just a me thing, but I won't immediately put the game on the shelf with the others. I don't know why I do this, but I'll keep it out on my desk for a few days before putting it on the shelf so I can to some extent appreciate the game before it just blends in with the others in the collection. This is most likely just me subconsciously justifying my laziness to put the game on the shelf already, but we've already established I have brain damage when it comes to buying video games, so who's to really know why I do this? But these are some of the quirks I have when it comes to buying video games, and I've always had some of these quirks, so I don't think that any of them will be going away anytime soon. So you know how when you walk into almost any video game store, one of the workers is always there to ask, is there anything I can help you with today? This is a question I would almost never prefer to answer, honestly. I've gotten really good at answering with the tried and true answer of, no, nah, just looking around. Trust me, never fails. Well, unless they then try to push or advertise some new game that just came out. Like, yes, I know that game released, but if I had come here for that game, I would have let you know when you originally asked me if I needed any help. I get it though, they're just trying to be polite and it's a part of their job to ask customers that, but can't I just walk in and be a nerd in peace please? GameStop always asks this welcome in question, and I swear one day I'm just gonna decide to answer honestly when they ask, and I'm just gonna be like, no, nothing in particular, I'm just here to browse around with your Funko Pops and other random knickknacks, rummage through your clearance pre-owned games, make fun of a few random overpriced products I find. And then overstay my welcome in the Nintendo Switch section, and most likely walk out of there 15 minutes later without buying anything. Can you tell I have a system down? There is the rare occasion that I do actually go to a game store with a very particular purpose, and when they do ask, I will tell them what I'm there for, and it's a really smooth and quick exchange. Although I do have a couple really awkward experiences with this happening once. So, I don't know what it was, but for some reason when Kirby Superstar Allies released, I just really wanted to pick up that game. So a few days after it released, I went to my local GameStop, walked in, and was asked if I needed help finding anything. And I kid you not, I looked to that GameStop employee dead in the eyes, and within 5 seconds of having just entered the store, I say, Kirby? That poor employee looked so confused after that, it took them a few seconds to figure out what I meant. Needless to say though, I did end up getting the game with no further hiccups. I have a similar story with Walmart being an awkward experience too. So, Walmarts keep all of their games locked up for the most part, so if you want to buy something, you'll have to go and ask an assistant. So, I'm there shopping at Walmart, and I decide to look at the video games, and I see Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, and I wanted to pick it up. So, I make my way over to the service counter, and let me tell you, I was at Walmart for groceries, so I'm pushing a full-blown shopping cart around with me. But, I ended up asking who I would later learn was the grumpiest Walmart employee ever if I could get a copy of Monkey Ball. And this man acted like he would rather keel over on the spot and die than go and get me my monkey ball game. I have some more very awkward video game buying experiences, and a lot of them are at Walmart now that I think about it, but these two were probably the most memorable for me. One last thing that I want to talk about is video game insurance or protection plans, because I've noticed a lot of retailers start to offer this. I know GameStop for sure does, and I think Amazon does as well, but who buys these? I mean, I can totally see the value in it, especially for maybe like a $60 or $70 video game. But like, I'm buying a pre-owned copy of Family Feud for the Nintendo Switch. I do not need to be paying three extra dollars to get a protection plan. I guess if you just want to get curious and see what happens when you light a Nintendo Switch cartridge on fire, you could get this and cover your costs, but why would you do that? I don't know though. I just wanted to talk about buying video games because I've been buying a lot of video games recently and I somewhat kind of wanted to justify that to myself by talking about it. I'm still going broke, 